Hey guys, what's up? So, I want to talk about save viewpoints. I think this is an important thing to understand when you're working with Navisworks. Generally, uh, when you get into a model, you may see already saved viewpoints, maybe a starting view, maybe some different areas of the buildings. And uh, there's also some uh, settings and functionality to uh, viewpoints in themselves that will uh, have an effect on them when you save them. Uh, there's also uh, animation settings and, and whatnot, and this can give you, uh, with your different save viewpoints, give you some good functionality in navigating your model pretty quickly if you're, you're looking to talk about different stuff. Um, your clash detection um, output um, will output, output uh, viewpoints, uh, also a number of other uh, options as well with that. Um, and you may want to use your viewpoints to kind of navigate the model uh, in that way as well. So, what we'll do here is um, we'll open up a Navis model. It doesn't really matter, but this one in particular is the Ice Stadium uh, NWD sample model that Navis Works kind of gets you uh, gives you when you download it. So, if we come up to the Applications menu, we can go to the Open button, and we've got sample files here. We can press that, and then we can open up the uh, Ice Stadium. There's a snowmobile, and that's actually a piece of equipment, and uh, the viewpoints will work the same way as they would in any other model, so it's kind of the same functionality across any type of modeled element, so uh, we'll click the one that we want to open, press open, it'll open it up, and then we're good to go from there. So with viewpoints up here, you may have seen that there's a viewpoint tab, so if we click on that, we get a save viewpoint button and a number of other options and then we get our unsaved viewpoints and then here is it's pretty much going to list all the viewpoints that are in this model if you come over here in our viewport our panel our save viewpoint panel there's nothing in here so this is blank uh, I want to show you real quick if you don't see this I'm gonna close it and over here in the view tab we have windows you can come down here to save viewpoints check that on and then you're good to go. I'm going to close that again because you also have the option of going to the viewpoint tab, clicking this drop down, and manage save viewpoints. So there they are again. And before I start saving viewpoints, I'm going to go into the settings dialog box. So in the applications menu again, we're going to come down to options. And right here, viewpoint defaults. So that's going to be, if I close all these, just to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like when you open it we'll open up interface and then we've got view viewpoint defaults right here and it all depends on your workflow because um, when we check these all on linear speed and um, uh, angular speed doesn't matter too much uh, for the performance wise but if you come in here and start saying save hide required override appearance What's going to do is look at every single viewpoint, and depending on how complex your model is, uh, when it's looking at all those different parameters and trying to apply the correct stuff, you may run into some performance issues. So it really depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve. So, but for this example, I'm going to keep these on because this this model is uh, pretty pretty clean and it's easy to move around. So with these checked on, uh, override appearance and then saved hide required. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to create my first viewpoint, and let's just say this is the open and save view. So I'm going to come up here, and I'll, I'll press this button. And we'll just give it a name like open slash save. And this will just be our open and save viewpoint. And, you know, because you may get in here and start moving around, looking at different elements, and... Um, Maybe loading in some new models and then saving it and then you could be in the middle of this stadium and then somebody doesn't know at all what this model is or how to navigate it and this open and save kind of just keeps a consistency so they expect and kind of they expect to see when they open up this model this view so with that we may want to now create another viewpoint let's just say we're going to do an elevation to highlight this roof up here and what we'll do is we can right click to select it but we can't really do much we have a number of options here but let's say we can override colors and stuff from here if we just right click while we're in this command but if we want to actually select that element we can do it from this this way too and we're going to get this little tab up here if you're familiar with Revit 
kind of works in the same way when you're getting into elements it gives you that that modify tab so up here it's kind of consistent it has that items tool that uh, tools that's kind of the consistent name it has for that tab so we press that and we have a number of options uh switch back which is just switching back to um, something like revit and we have a hold command and all this does is it actually holds the, the element where it is based off of where you are in the viewpoint and then when you're flying around it's going to like bring that roof focus some zoom stuff and some hide and then we have transfer and appearance when that check that we did in the edit uh, viewpoint defaults hide required that's kind of what this is talking about and then the transform from or the appearance is um, kind of what it's talking about there uh, for the appearance override uh, setting and I'll show you a quick by clicking that and maybe we'll change this to a red to highlight it in this elevation view and then we'll save a new viewpoint before we do let's check the settings oops didn't mean to create a folder we'll check the settings we'll do edit and we'll see hide required and then override appearance I'll press OK so you can see it's red so it's actually overriding that appearance value it's not pushing anything back it's just kind of in this viewpoint if we go back to open and save we can see that we have that uh, view and it isn't going to have that override appearance we go back to this view and we can see it's there again if we actually go into this open and save and change that you'll see uh, what that function is actually for so we'll turn override appearance press ok and then when we're in that view that's what's going to happen so I'll try to do a control Z to go back to my original before that happened. It might be difficult. Let's see if we got it back. All right, we're good to go. Hide is kind of the same thing. So maybe we want to come over here and uh, maybe we don't want to um, have that red uh, roof anymore so what we'll do is we'll actually come over here to home and we can reset the appearance and this is going to reset all or we can come to viewpoint or we can come to I think it's our items tool so items tool we can reset transform so what this is an actual selected item it's going to reset it's not going to reset everything the other option is going to reset anything that has a applied appearance to it so we'll um we'll reset that appearance then we'll come in here let's say we want to take a look at this this wall here and you can see that we're actually selecting the entire level one. So that's actually our selection selection settings. So we can actually come into our select button, our select options, and then we can mess with this. So we'll do uh, last unique and change it to that. Now we can select into it. It's going to drill a little bit further down that list. You can change things. You can change stuff from there like uh, selecting the entire models but for this example we want to select that let's say we want to override that appearance we we may want to change it to uh, let's say red again and this one we actually want to hide so what we'll do is we'll come over here and hide this maybe we want to pull this out and then what we'll do is we'll come over to the viewpoint tab again we'll save that And real quick, we'll say this is south, just to kind of keep consistent so we know what we're looking at. And then for this one, we'll say this is um, east. So I'm going to click back in here. I'm going to press escape to get out of all the commands. And you'll see, I can go to open, save, south, and I've got my roof kind of highlighted there. And then I have this view that's supposed to say east I'm gonna press enter forgot to do that we, we've got this east view and we've got the wall highlighted in red we have this other wall over here hidden and we've got this move so it's gonna keep all that consistent and 
we don't have to worry about um, inconsistencies with the different views but just make sure that when you do create your viewpoints that you have the specific settings that are going to do that for you I'll press OK I'm going to come here and actually reset everything and you also for hide it's kind of different you can't reset that from here so what you'll do is you'll just say unhide all and there's a drop down for a uh, unrequire all for this we'll just unhide all all and we've got it now and so now we're kind of in a, another viewpoint and viewpoints um, you know for that reason for like uh, setting up default views or setting them up views that we want to talk about during a meeting we could create folders so what we can do is create a folder and say this is you know a meeting meeting one and maybe we're going to talk about um, that roof and then maybe we're going to talk about a oh if this happens to you and you can't get through stuff uh, your collision might be on so if you come over here you can turn that off and you're good to go Maybe we want to talk about this, so I'll just save this as a viewpoint. And then what you do is you can just add the views within there, and then you're good to go, and you can quickly kind of jump around these, and you're, you're not stuck to them. As soon as you kind of start moving around, you're out of that viewpoint, and then if you want to come back to it, it's as simple as pressing that button. But like I said before, you know, kind of try to give them some unique names. That way it's easy and consistent when you're looking through the model. Another thing is if we take a look at some of the other settings within there. We'll come back to edit. And we'll take a look at our collision settings. And this is kind of, this is going to... This is going to give us options for height, eye set, and our radius, and then collision, gravity, and auto crouch. So this isn't too important, but the idea behind this is that when you're in these different views, or if you're in gravity, or collision, or if you have gravity on, that when you're walking around, you have a height that's kind of consistent with the uh, average person when you're looking at a model. So just mess around with those settings and see what works best for you. Another thing is, is for animations, it's pretty simple. It's just viewpoint to viewpoint. So maybe we want to do something like this. Start from out here and then fly into the building. So what we'll do, so we'll right click and we'll just say add animation. And then we're, we're kind of good that the animation is created and, but it hasn't have there's no viewpoints that have been added to it so what we'll do is we'll create the viewpoints and what I usually do is I'll just kinda start getting it started and getting an idea of what I want to try to do pick that as my next viewpoint my next viewpoint my next viewpoint and then what you do is you just highlight them and then grab them and then you just kind of move them up there and then now it's going to put it in the animation folder. You can click animation up here and you'll you'll get this drop down list. You can actually select the animation and then press play. And now it's going to run through that. Again, some of these settings are going to affect the way that this animation um, outputs. So down here we have motion linear speed and angular speed say this is too slow we can update this to something quicker so maybe um, 24 feet now individually updating every viewpoint may be annoying 
if you see here, you actually, if you highlight more than one, you don't get that option. And it's kind of a weird workaround, but for whatever reason, that's the case. So something you may want to do is is create actually another view uh, animation. And generally, uh, when I'm in the interior of the building, I may want to use a slower uh, linear speed. And when I'm on the exterior of the bu building, the radius and the linear speed needs to be a little bit faster because I'm, I'm moving around the entire exterior of the building. And so what I do is I'll create another animation and then I'll bring those viewpoints into the second in animation. I'll edit their, I'll edit the overall dur duration of it. So we'll get this and then 4.7 is the duration. We'll see that it syncs angular and linear, linear speed. If I change it, it's going to update that. And then what I'll do is I'll just bring them back into the animation. Make sure that we move this back into where it needs to go. And you'll see with the updated speed that I have. I didn't update those last ones, but these two first ones we've up updated. So we've got 24 feet for the speed. I'll do a quick play and you'll see how quick it's going and then it'll get to those last ones and kind of slow down. You may want to transition into that. So this isn't specific to animations, like I'm not doing a video on animations, but your viewpoints are going to be stored and used during animation. So it's good to kind of get an idea of how they're um, um, used and just some of the settings behind them. And uh, for these animations up here, you know, just having your default views and then views for, for meetings. There's also the clash detection output of views. And what that's going to do is actually output, output your clashes and then use appearance um, overrides to hide all the other stuff. And then apply a, a um, appearance like a, a green and red typically to the clashing elements. So it works in the same concept. So... I think after you understand how this works, then all the other tools that tie into it are going to be kind of, they're going to be pretty simple to at least grasp pretty quickly. So I hope this gives you an idea of how to use and operate uh, viewpoints, play around with them, um, maybe, you know, setting some up for, for your team and to use um, for consistency uh, reasons and just, you know, see if they help you out so i hope it helps let me know if it does and let me know if you have any questions um like share comment uh thanks a lot